Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we'll explore one of the very first Beagle V units. Beagle V is the world's first affordable RISC-V Linux development board. Although there are other RISC-V development boards capable of running Linux on the market, Beagle V significantly cuts the price. It will be available for 149 US dollars. This makes it a perfect choice for research and development purposes. Unlike ARM or x86, the RISC-V computer architecture is provided under open source licenses that does not require any fees to use. This groundbreaking new business model has the potential to disturb the chip manufacturing industry and the market as we know it today. As a software engineer working on various open source projects, I applied and I was approved in the Beagle Board Community Beta program, therefore I have early access to this Beagle V board. I receive it for free. Now let's have a closer look at it. Let's start with a quick unboxing. The better version of Beagle V is coming in a cardboard box and inside an anti-static bag. The first thing that you notice after getting it out of the box is the huge heatsink and the fan below it. Using a screwdriver, I'm going to quickly remove it so that we can have a closer look at it. Beagle V is with RISC-V 64-bit CPU at 1 GHz from Star 5. The better version is with JH7100 chipset. The final version will be with the newer JH7110 chipset. There are RAM chips on both sides of the CPU. There are variants of the board with 4GB and 8GB LPDDR4 RAM. In the corner below the 40 pin header there is a chip for 2.4GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. There are also dedicated connectors for a display and for a couple of cameras. On the front side of Beagle V you will find USB-C connector for powering the board, HDMI connector and a couple of buttons to boot and reset. As of the moment, the software driver is not compatible with all HDMI displays. Some of the old model displays cannot work with Beagle V HDMI port. I hope this will be fixed in near future. On the other side, there are a Gigabit Ethernet port and four USB 3 host type A ports. There is also a 3.5mm audio jack. In the corner, there are JTAG pins for advanced hardware debugging. The 40-pin header is the same as the header on modern Raspberry Pi models. However, OGPIOs can be configured to different functions including, but not only, limited to SDIO, Audio, SPI, I2C, UART and PuSuite modulation. On the fourth side of Beagle V, there is a dedicated display port. There is a microSD card slot on the back of Beagle V. Later on in the video, we will use it to boot a Linux distribution on this board. The hardware specifications of Beagle V are impressive. A lot of organizations and individuals are involved in the process of designing it. Beagle V is possible through the partnership of three key players, the Beagle Board Foundation, Seed Studio and Star 5. The Beagle Board Foundation provides the community. We are all familiar with the amazing open source Hardware Beagle Board models such as Beagle Bone Black, development board with Texas Instruments, ARM system on a chip. They have an existing community which is ready now for Beagle V. Seed Studio is a hardware enabler with manufacturing capabilities. They are offering numerous hardware platforms and sensor modules, including now Beagle V. The RISC V system on a chip on Beagle V is coming from a relatively new Chinese company called Star 5. This better version of Beagle V is with Star 5 JH7100 chipset, which becomes very hot while running. Low power functioning will be improved in the new JH7110 chipset design for the final version of Beagle V. Currently, the heatsink is not enough and there is a cooling fan. On the better version to spread the heat. The cooling fan works at 5 volts. The red wire should be connected to a pin providing 5 volts. The black wire should go to a pin for ground. 
Right now, a Fedora image for BigoV is available for a free download. A wiki article contains the exact steps how to download it on your personal computer and flash it on a micro SD card. The instructions depend on the operating system on your personal computer. There are sections for Microsoft Windows, Mac OS or GNU Linux distributions. In the near future, I expect more GNU Linux distributions to become available for BigoV. After flashing the image, while BigoV is turned off, plug the microSD card in the dedicated slot on the back of the board. It is possible to log in through SSH or over serial connection to the Fedora image booted on BigoV. I'll be using USB to UR debug cable to log in over serial connection. Connect ground of the cable to ground pin of BigoV. Connect RX of the cable to pin 8 of BigoV. The TX of the cable should go to pin 10 of BigoV. In a nutshell, we are crossing RX and TX. USB-C power supply providing 3 amperes at 5 volts is recommended for BigoV. Plug it in the USB Type-C connector to turn on the board. I'm running Ubuntu on my laptop. The bolt rate for serial communication with BigoV is 115200. I'm using screen to interact with the board through UART. For this Fedora image, I can log in as root with password star 5. The password is the same as the CPU brand of BigoV. Please keep in mind this is just a better unit for the moment. I'm sure that in the coming months the software support for BigoV will be improved further and the whole hardware potential will be unleashed. BigoV is a powerful RISC-V development board with rich features for artificial intelligence. Someone might be wondering, is BigoV a Raspberry Pi killer? Well, definitely not, at least not right now. However, the RISC-V computer architecture is here to stay and probably to change the industry. I think of BigoV as an early bird flying with the new wind of change. Thank you for watching. Have a look at my other videos and open source projects. Please hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for more videos.